So what I've got here is a Transcend. I just went for the uh, 128 gigabyte M2 SSD. Now before you do anything, before, before you do anything with your Chromebook, if you're going to be replacing the drive, you need to run the Chrome recovery and make you a recovery USB. You're going to absolutely need that later on. So make your Chrome recovery USB. It's built in. Use the machine you're going to fix to do it with so there's a complete match as far as the hardware goes and then you can order one of these off of uh, the link on my Amazon site. One of the really daunting parts of this doing this swap out and I don't have anything to go by so I'm just going in blind on faith that it's going to work out but you have no less than 18 screws on the back of this um, Acer and so it's, you're going to have to remove and replace 18 screws. The thing I make, I would make sure I do, which I'm going to do, is I've got this rivet ratchet set that has a lot of different heads, and I've already already predetermined that this is the perfect fit. You want to get a perfect fit screw head in there because you don't want any slop. You don't want to strip the screw out trying to take it out because if you do, uh, that's it, game over. You you won't be able to complete the job. So make sure you get a good fit, good solid fit with no wobble no play because you don't want to just end up grinding out the Phillips head. And uh, so what I do is I also put down tape and I'll put it up here and I keep the screws in the exact same order that I took them out in. That's probably paranoia and being just a little bit OCD about it, but uh, it, I feel like it's the way to do it because then you know which screws, sometimes they're varying lengths and you want to make sure you get the right link back in the right hole. All right, I couldn't find any tape. So what I've done is I've gotten a cardboard box because I don't want them to roll off, hit the floor. I don't want to have to hunt them. I've had to do that before. And now I will start to take the screws out. So we'll take our first screw out. And luckily it seems like it's going to be pretty easy here. got that little blue stuff on them and I'm going to put, arrange them in exactly the way they come out. So I'm going to stop this and I'll come back when I've gotten all of them off. Okay so we've got all the screws removed and here's sort of the moment of truth because I didn't see any video on the internet about how this comes off and sometimes they just lift right off, sometimes you have to kind of coerce them, sometimes you have to get a little rough with them. The other thing that I don't know is I don't know if there's any screws hidden underneath these rubber feet. Hopefully there's not, but so here we're going to go and we're going to just try to pop the back off uh, and hopefully all the screws are out and it's just going to um, lift right off without a lot of trouble. Yep, seems to be cooperating really nicely here. Yep. No, and I probably should have, here's just something you should always do. You should always power it down before you take the screws off. I will be right back. Okay, so have to, having, after having to reinstall six of the 18 screws so that I can open it to power it down and then re-removing the six screws, I'm ready to try to pop the back off in earnest this time because I didn't want to pop it powered up. I certainly couldn't uh, take the old SSD out if it was under power. Now, it does seem like it's going to be fairly easy because I can hardly get it back together once I started taking it apart without putting screws in it. So... I'm just going to work my way around it, and I don't know if there's any set way that you do it. I want to be careful not to open it so much that it comes on. That would be really important. Okay. And it looks like it's just popping off real easy. Yep, nothing to it. There it goes. All right. So we're inside. Here's what the back looks like. I'll give you a tour real quick. And I don't see an SSD anywhere in here. Wow. Oh, here it is right here. Okay. Okay, and it looks like it's replaceable. So the SSD's here, fan, the memory's part of it. You can't replace the memory. The speakers on this thing are beautiful. They're awesome. Look at this big fat battery, isn't that pretty? 
So anyway, what we're going to do now is we're going to take this 16 gigabyte, and hopefully this is the same size as that, that I ordered the right one. Um, if not, this next few seconds could be awkward. Yep, same size. Okay, great. It is humid enough in here that I'm not worried about setting uh, any static electricity. I guess that's one of the best parts of living in the south. Now, I've never done this before, so I have no idea what's involved. But it looks like that's a... Looks like it's a Phillips head. Again, I'm going to make sure I find the perfect fit. Seems to be plenty good. So I'm just going to loosen this up. And it's coming right up. And I guess I take it all the way out. There we go. Pops up. Put this to the side. I am going to just gently slide that out and set it over here. Well, I'm pretty amazed at how tiny it is. I'm going to slide this inside here, just like that. Good fit. Get it down. This part might be a little tricky. Maybe that's why it has that extra wide head. Push that down like that, being careful not to touch the board, just touch the label. And then just tighten it down to the point that it's finger tight. All right, so I think I'm ready to, now at this point I should have destroyed the Chromebook. In other words, it's not a Chromebook anymore, it's a nothing. Looks like that's seated okay, everything looks good. So I'm just going to put the back back on. And I know from my little faux pas before that I won't be able to open it up and see if it works um, without the screws in the back. So um, as I snap this back on, and then I'll let the screws do the work. So I'm going to have to install the other 18 screws back in to open it up and get the message that it's fouled up and that I need to reboot it from hopefully this recovery drive right here and we'll be good to go. So I'm not going to make you let you watch me screw in 18 screws, um, but I'll be back as soon as it's ready to power up. All right, so here's the first open without the recovery CD, the USB in the machine. Hopefully it won't be tears and stuff and hopefully it'll open and we'll see what happens. And nothing happens. Oh, there it goes. So you can see it there. Let me adjust this so you can see. Chrome OS is missing or damaged. Please insert a recovery USB stick or SD card. So I take great comfort in it saying that. So let's do that now. We're just going to go ahead and go straight to that part and stick it in here like so, and hopefully it'll do that, and then it'll do that. You're about to recover your computer, make sure it is plugged into a power source. Okay, did not do that part. Not sure I can do that part. Um, so I'll come right back, because I'm gonna move it to where it's plugged in, but you can see uh, it's verifying the recovery of the thing integrity of the recovery media. It's now plugged in. Recovery is in process. Please do not turn off the computer or disconnect the power. No worries there because me loves me Starship Hammer Time. And notice that the screen is really looks small but that's because that's the full HD eight so um, while it's doing this, I'll give you a, really, a little tour. These speakers are the bomb. They are amazing. They sound great. I love the fact that it doesn't have a numeric keypad because a numeric keypad is it's just annoying. You're always missing the edge of the keyboard and hitting those keys if you're not used to it being there. You can't ask for a bigger, nicer trackpad than it's on the Acer 15. 
I like the white ones a lot. Um, I, they get dirty. The top gets dirty, but you can clean it um, sometimes. I've got a couple of things that won't come out. Thinking about just putting a vinyl, some kind of protective vinyl on there. So it says system recovery is complete. Please remove the recovery media and your computer will restart automatically. So let's see what happens. I'm going to go ahead and also get out something else that I love. Well, that's a very, very, very happy sight and a very, very happy sound. It's because I don't have Wi-Fi here um, and I can't use my phone as a hotspot. This little puppy, which I'll do another review on, the Karma Go, is very cool. I'm going to set it up so that I can have Wi-Fi, even though it's very slow. See, it, watch how it turns on. It's well, this is a really well-designed piece of equipment. When those three things go, you let go, and the light comes on. We'll set it here. And so anyway, that really concludes. I'll go ahead and let you see it come all the way up and we'll see, I look at the file system to make sure it actually has uh, 128 gigs of storage space, which is kind of crazy good. Okay, so Karma Go is working, so I'm gonna sign to it. I'll have to log in. Let's see. Well, it may be taking a little bit longer to boot up. can see these so I know the radio is not dead inside the machine which would be heartbreaking um, don't know why it doesn't see the karma go there it is karma Wi-Fi just took a little while to boot up okay so it's going to connect it's going to bring up a login page I'm going to stop it for that and we'll come back in just a second I'm just going to tighten up on the screen for the rest of this video Took a while to find it, but there it is, 106.4 gigabytes left. So we've successfully upgraded this Acer 15 to 128 gigabyte drive, which will be very roomy for our Crouton install. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, if you have an Acer 15, you're fortunate enough to be in that club. Um, I hope that you'll see for about 52 bucks, you can uh, safely and, and you can safely Upgrade your storage uh, and void your warranty. And so buy refurbished if you're going to experiment with it. Have a great day and thanks for watching this video.